I'm Richard Martinez with the Rise Academy, and this is a conflict resolution tool. All right, so first of all, before I get into these seven steps, you need to realize and have some kind of emotional intelligence for yourself because I'm not going to get into that in this tool, but you need to learn some level of emotional intelligence so that you're not going into this confrontation, you know, with a high level of energy that's going to make you defensive, reactive, angry, uh, because that's not going to help anything or anyone. So you can go to another program. You can begin to develop that in yourself and emotional intelligence where you have self-awareness, self-control, and a self-discipline so that you can be more effective in the conflict resolution. All right, step number one, you have to reveal the problem, right? So first you have to bring the problem to the table. Now, in order to be able to do that effectively, you need to create some kind of connection. For an example, like if I have my hands like this, you know, they're not, you know, connected, right? If you try to step on that, I'm not going to be able to carry you, right? Just with some fingertips because it's, it's too much weight for this kind of connection. Now, if I put my fingers together, right? And now I have some power here where I can, you know, actually throw somebody. If you step on me, I can help you to jump over a fence. You know, cheerleaders use this stance to throw people up, right? So now there's power. It can carry weight because of the connection. So let's say it's somebody who is gossiping, right? And you see that they're gossiping, you hear about it, it's bothering you or hurt you. So this is something you need to confront them about. So the problem is gossiping. So you need to reveal that. You need to bring that up into conversation after you created that connection, right? So now here we are in the table where we're sitting down in front of each other, standing, wherever it is. You want to create a good environment for the confrontation, right? You don't want to, you know, be in a loud place or, you know, in a, in a club or, you know, in a place where there's a lot of people around where you're not going to really be able to, you know, talk about these, these topics and really be open and honest about it. So you want to have a good surrounding, a good time and a good place to be able to have this confrontation. So now it's time to reveal the problem. I see that you've been gossiping. There's been some things that you've been saying around the office that's not really adding to the team. You know, it's creating divisions. You know, it's creating, you know, hurt feelings. And so I wanted to talk to you about that. So you're revealing the problem, right? Now, normally, when you reveal somebody's problem, what happens? What do they do? So that's actually the number two. The next thing that's going to happen almost 99.9% .9 of the time is that they're going to start to blame. They're going to want to make excuses. So just imagine it like this. So I have the problem here, right? So I give them the problem. I say, hey, I heard that you are gossiping or I've noticed that you are gossiping. I put that into their hands so that my, my hopes is that they see it and take responsibility. That's the goal, right? So that they face it. So, but normally, what did I say? Number two, what happens? They start to blame. They start to make excuses. So this is what it looks like. So I give them the problem and then, okay, this is them with the problem. They say, oh, well, oh, well, I wasn't gossiping. It's because, you know, so-and-so came to me with a problem and I was just talking to them about it. I, what do you mean? It was so-and-so. And they start to, they get this problem. It's like they're putting it in the hands of somebody else and saying, not my problem. It, it was them. So now they've done that. So now you're going to do number three, which is you're going to repeat what they're saying and then ask them what they're going to do about that you're going to give them back the problem. So they give it like this. Oh, no, it's so-and-so. You should say, oh, so you're saying that you were gossiping, you were sharing those things because, you know, Joe or Billy or Jennifer came and shared that with you first and you didn't know it was gossip, so you just started to share. Number four says, if they go back to number two and start blaming and making excuses, you go right back to number three. So you're not going to go past that number four right there. If they keep making excuses and keep blaming, you're going to keep going back and saying, okay, let me repeat what you just said. Oh, so now you're saying that you're gossiping because, you know, you don't like this person and, you know, you think that the, this person needs to be exposed. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, because, you know, they keep saying things and, you know, I just want to protect the team here, you know. So again, you're going to go back to number three and you're going to ask. You're going to repeat what they said. Say, oh, so you're saying that you're gossiping because this person needs to be exposed and you don't like what they're doing. Well, yeah, you know, I'm protecting the team. And then I get this problem and I give it back to them. Okay, well, that is not going to work here in this office, so what are you going to do about it? So once I bring it up, if they go to two, they make excuses. I'm going to go to three, repeat what they're saying, repeat their, their excuses so that they know that I heard, right? So they, then I'm acknowledging and recognizing their excuse. 
and then I'm going to give the problem back to them. Okay, you're saying it's because of this, but this is not going to work in this environment, so what are you going to do about it? And you just wait. And you don't try to explain yourself because right now you're being very direct and clear. You're stable. You're not, you're not defensive. You're not reactive. You're giving them back the problem. You're not giving them anything to fight with. You're being very clear. So it's like, so you're saying it's because of this person that you're doing this? Well, this is not going to work. I'll go talk to that person too. But right now we're talking about you. Now, once you get to the place where you corner them, and now they're like, they run out of excuses. They run out of justifications. They run out of people and things to blame. So now they're going to face it, right? That's when you know. So this is when you go to number five. Now that you see the problem and you admitted it, you got to take responsibility, right? Responsible, response able. You're able to respond. You're not going to be able to respond unless you take responsibility and get some kind of option, something to do about it. You have to be able to respond, right? So you got to ask them, okay, what are some options? Give me three options of what you can do to change this behavior, what you can do to change this habit. What are three options that you can do to clean up this mess and this problem that you made? And then you keep them, you just leave them with it and you wait. Calm, cool, and collected. Now, this is where you're gonna be tempted to wanna give them the solutions, wanna give them what they should be doing. Don't do that. You wanna draw up from with them so they take more responsibility for the actions they're about to take to clean up the mess. As they come up with the options, you're going to start talking about the pros and the cons to each. Okay, so now let's look at these three options that you came up after you took responsibility. Then let's look at the pros and cons to each one of those. Let's talk those through. Step six, choose an option. You already have these three. So which one is going to work the best? A lot of times we get tempted, especially as supervisor, especially as the leaders, or you know, you've been in this position, you've done this for a long time, so you already know the best solution. And we're gonna get tempted to tell them what option to pick, or even tell them that they need to be doing this. Don't do that, why? Because their level of commitment is gonna be less. So as you can see on this graphic right here, there is the QI for the quality of idea, and then there's the LC for the level of commitment. Now if the quality of idea that I have if I can just give them you know, the best idea and the quality of my idea is a 10, because it's the best, right? What do you think their level of commitment is going to be to my idea? It's not their idea. This is my idea, what I'm telling them what they should do. What do you think their level of commitment is gonna be on a scale of one to 10? Let's say, let's say a five, okay? Let's say you have a 10 uh, on a scale of one to 10 for your idea, the quality of idea, but their level of commitment, because it's your idea, it's gonna be a level five. Now, if you 10 times five, what is it? 50, okay? So now let's create another scenario. So instead of you giving them the idea, you have more patience, you start to work with them, you get their options, what are the pros and cons to the options that they have, you have them pick an option, now it's their idea. Let's say it's not the best idea, maybe it's a six, right? Um, it's not a 10 like yours, but it's a six. What do you think their level of commitment's gonna be to their idea? It's gonna be a 10, right? This is their idea. 10 times six is 60. So you can see where you're gonna get a better result. It's gonna be when they commit to their own idea. Now, knowing that, you have a strategy in here, okay? Because you're gonna actually come back to this and actually help them better their idea, and you'll see how. Now you need to talk about how they're going to do this. When are they gonna do it by? and you get them to actually envision themselves and they're using their words to explain, to describe, to create an image of how they're going to do this, how they're going to execute this option, this solution, and when are they gonna do it by? So you're getting them to, so you're asking them a question, okay, so well, how are you gonna do this? How are you gonna clean up this mess? You know, this option that you chose, tell me how you're gonna do it, and you just listen. And you let them kind of figure it out. Sometimes it starts off slow where they're like, well, I guess I'll just, um, just go and do it. But how? How are you going to walk in when you go and clean up your mess? How is your face gonna be? What are you gonna be wearing? You know, what kind of tone you're gonna have? All these different things to get them to really see themselves cleaning up their own mess. So they can really see themselves change these habits, change these behaviors. So they have, you have to get them to talk about it, to explain how they're gonna do it step by step and when are they gonna do it by? Have some deadlines, which is the last step, which is the follow-up. 
So now I've taken them through this whole process, right? I've revealed the problem. They maybe gave some excuses and blamed, and I went to number three and repeated it back to them and gave them back the problem and asked them, what are you going to do with this? However times I needed to do that until they get to the next one where they take responsibility. And then I asked them, okay, what are some three options that you're going to do to fix this, to change this? And I wait for them to draw it out, right? So now out of those three options, what do I do? I get them to choose one. Okay, out of these three options, which one are you going to choose? And then there, I ask them how they're going to do it, when are they going to do it by, and then I follow up with them. Now the next time I follow up, whether it's the next day, depending on the problem that you're bringing up, the next week, two weeks, the next month, I'm going to go through this whole process again. I'm going to bring up the same thing that we talked about. How is it going? If they make excuses and blame, I'm going to go back to the same thing until we get to the point where we come up with three more options for this idea. Now the idea is going to go from a level six to a level seven or eight. They're going to come up with better ideas themselves and you're going to be there leading them to do it. So you actually train them to be a stronger person, to begin to think for themselves, to take responsibility for their own stuff and to clean up their own mess. So now you're actually empowering your team in a whole different way because you're using this tool of how to be more effective in your confrontation. This is the Conflict Resolution Tool, and I'm Richard Martinez with the RISE Academy.